A single man adopts newborn no one wanted. 14 years later, a DNA test results shocks him. While engaging in a fun DNA experiment on himself and his 14-year-old adopted son, a divorced man accidentally unlocks a family bond shell that changes his life forever. Please make sure to join our family by subscribing and activate the notification button to never miss our stories. Discovering you have a sibling you never knew existed and that you're actually adopted might sound like something straight out of a movie, but what if it happened in real life? Genetic testing can uncover some dark family secrets and turn a family upside down as it did for doting dad Patrick. When his 39th birthday rolled around in March that year, he decided to do a fun experiment with his 14-year-old adopted son Evan. He thought it was a cool idea and ordered an at-home DNA test kit, knowing little that his fun experiment would reveal something unexpected. Dad, what is this thing? And why are you swabbing my cheek? Evan asked as Patrick collected their samples for the test. It's a DNA test kit, son. Did you know? We are all 99.9% .9 alike, and you may never know who can be related to you. Patrick collected the samples and sent them for testing. He assumed he would soon get to the bottom of the genetic diseases he might have and gather some information about Evan's birth parents, but what he discovered three weeks later was not what he expected. Patrick was thrilled when a notification popped on his laptop. He logged into his password-protected DNA testing account to check the results. Finally, I can find out more about my son and my family tree, he exclaimed, filling in the necessary information to access the results. But the results unraveled something Patrick never expected. His DNA was a 99% match with Evans, indicating he was the boy's birth father. What? How can this be? He shrieked, deciding not to show his son the results until he cracked the mystery. The first thing he did was reach out to the foster home from where he adopted Evan 14 years ago. Mr. Gilmore, it's so nice to see you. How may I help you? The caregiver asked him. He was the same man Patrick had contacted 14 years ago regarding Evan's adoption. I wanted to discuss some details about Avon. Oh, how is he? Did he adjust well with you? He was always crying here, and nobody adopted him because they thought he was unmanageable. I still cannot forget the tantrums he threw whenever somebody picked him up from the cradle. Thank goodness he now has a loving home. This sounded odd to Patrick, considering Evan never cried or threw tantrums as a baby under his care. Okay, so do you have any contact details of his parents? His mother, maybe, asked Patrick. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Gilmore, but we don't have any information about Evan's parents. We just found him on our doorstep without any identification or letter attached to him. Distraught, Patrick went home, but he was determined to find out why Evan turned out to be related to him. What am I missing? How is it even possible that this boy is my biological son? He thought, then his ex-wife, Andrea, came to mind. Fourteen years ago, Andrea and Patrick's marriage hit a rough patch after he refused to try new things to make more money. He had the potential but didn't like taking risks, so he stuck to his low-paying teaching job. His stubbornness and indifference to her nagging about new money-making schemes ended their marriage. They divorced, and Andrea walked out of Patrick's life without looking back. Patrick thought about their last few months together before they broke up. He remembered Andrea throwing up a couple of times and visiting the doctor occasionally. When he asked her about it, she told him it was nothing to worry about, just stress. Several doubts brewed in Patrick's head. He knew where Andrea worked, so he went to see her for an explanation. Patrick, I'm so glad to see you. How are you? She greeted him. I'm good. How are you? Well, look at me. What do you think? I married a rich man, and I am so happy now. What about you? Still single, Patrick bluntly replied. He just wanted to get to the point, but that's not why I came here. I want to know about Evan. Evan? Who's that? My son. You have a son. I adopted him from the shelter 14 years ago, and it turns out that he is my real son. Andrea turned pale and frowned. Her reaction made Patrick suspicious. I want to know the truth, Andrea. Speak up. Why do I have a son I never knew about? You're the only woman I've been intimate with. Tell me the truth. Moments of silence prevailed until Andrea finally spoke up. That boy is your son, Patrick. Our son, she cried. Our son. But. I'm sorry. I should have told you, but I was unsure about our child's future with an unsuccessful and poor father like you. I did not want to leave my baby with you and make his life miserable after we divorced. What did you do, Andrea? Tell me the truth. I carried our baby to term and gave birth to him. I wanted to move on, but I couldn't look after him. I chose not to reveal him to you because I didn't want him to live a poor life, so I left him at the shelter's doorstep, hoping some rich couple would adopt him. Patrick was startled. 
How could you do that to our child? How could you abandon him only because you wanted him to live a rich life? You had no idea that fate would bring us together, did you? The son you never wanted me to see or raise is with me now. Patrick's revelation shook Andrea. She felt guilty and apologized. I'm sorry, Patrick. I just wanted our son to live a better life, free of struggle. I thought you could never afford to give him the life he deserved. Your sorry will not make up for the heartbreak I suffered alone until he came into my life. Your rash decision almost kept me from being a father to my son. Patrick, I'm glad you found him. I know what I did was wrong, but I had no choice. Please take care of our son, cried Andrea. I know how to take care of my son. You don't have to tell me. Goodbye, he fumed, storming out. Dad, thank you so much. I love this bike. You got a promotion or something, exclaimed Evan upon seeing the mountain bike Patrick bought for him. It was his dream to own one. Ah, honestly, yes, I did, son. I got promoted from being just your adoptive father to actually being your real father. Evan raised a brow, unable to process the meaning behind Patrick's words. Another story about a retired teacher who volunteered at a group home was surprised to meet a carbon copy of his granddaughter. This led to the discovery of a long-kept secret that changed their lives forever. A retired teacher decided to volunteer at a group home and was surprised to see a young girl who looked exactly like his granddaughter. Then he discovers a long-kept secret that would change their lives forever. Patrick worked as a teacher all his life. He lived alone in a small apartment after separating from his wife over a decade ago. At 60, he decided to retire to spend more time with his daughter and granddaughter, who he only reunited with recently. They had been estranged for years, and he wanted to compensate for the lost time. On the days he couldn't spend with his family, he would volunteer at orphanages to pass the time. He was fond of children and often offered free tutoring services there. One day, he decided to visit an orphanage further away in town. He was surprised to see a young girl there who looked exactly like his granddaughter Mindy. Out of curiosity, Patrick decided to talk to the girl. Hello there, he greeted. How old are you, young girl? I'm six years old, sir. I heard you're going to be teaching us math today. I love math, the sweet girl replied. Patrick was surprised to hear that the girl was six years old because Mindy was the same age. They had the same light brown hair, bright hazelnut brown eyes, and fair white skin. The only thing distinguishing the young orphan from Mindy was a tiny mole beside her right eye. That day, Patrick tutored the girl, who introduced herself as Andy, along with four other children her age. Thank you for being obedient students today, kids, he greeted them after they completed their lesson. Thank you, Mr. Patrick. Will you be coming back soon? One of the kids asked. We had a lot of fun, another chimed in. Patrick smiled and nodded his head. Of course, I'd love to come back, he said, but his thoughts were on Andy and how he looked so much like Mundy. He was determined to find out more about their similarity, so he invited his daughter to come with him to the orphanage next time. This orphanage outside the neighborhood needs more volunteers during the weekend. Can you come with me? Patrick asked his daughter. He decided not to tell her about Andy because he wanted a genuine reaction from her upon seeing the young child. Of course, Dad, I can go with you on Saturday, his daughter Lisa agreed. When they arrived at the orphanage that weekend, Lisa didn't take long to spot Andy. As soon as she saw her, she began to cry and walked out of the building. Lisa, Patrick called out. What's wrong? He asked. Have you seen that child before? Lisa had a guilty look on her face as she looked at her dad. I'm sorry, dad. I've been keeping a secret from you all these years. What do you mean? What secret have you been keeping? He asked as they sat on one of the benches outside the orphanage. Lisa recalled the time she was estranged from Patrick for several years because of her relationship with a man six years her senior. When I got pregnant, Maxwell left me, and I went through the pregnancy alone. I was carrying twins, she explained. For the first year of the twins' lives, I had mom helping me through it. She took us in and helped me through all the sleepless nights and tiring days. That was the same time mom fell ill, and by the time the kids turned one, she died, Lisa revealed. I knew I couldn't raise two kids alone, Dad. I had to make a painful decision to leave Andy at the orphanage. I didn't think she would still be here. I thought someone would have adopted her by now. She was such a sweet baby. Lisa sobbed and kept apologizing to her dad. Patrick sat there in silence before finally putting a reassuring arm on his daughter's shoulder. You did what you thought was best at the time, sweetheart, he told her. I'm sorry I wasn't there to help you through all this. You know, when your mom and I were new parents, we barely had anything. We didn't even have enough money for diapers, so we used reusable gauze. We were so stretched out on food that we'd share every meal, no matter how small, Patrick revealed. When you turned three, we discovered you had a developmental delay. 
You couldn't speak, and the doctor suggested we take you to a speech therapist. We did, and eventually we couldn't pay for that too, so I worked hard to become a teacher so I could teach you myself, he told his daughter, who was shocked by what she was hearing. I didn't know about any of this, Lisa cried. You did everything you could for me while I gave up my daughter. It's not too late, sweetheart. Andy is still your daughter, and she can still have a family, he told her. It's only been four years, there's still plenty of time, and if you feel you can't do it, I'd gladly adopt Andy myself. Lisa paused for a while, deep in thought. Then she nodded her head and agreed with her dad. You're right, she said. It's not too late, Dad. Let's take Andy home. After spending a day with Andy and the rest of the children, Lisa couldn't help but feel emotional. She felt strongly about being with her daughter again, and they had an instant connection that was hard to miss. Lisa and Patrick helped one another with everything they needed to finalize Andy's adoption. When they took her home, Andy and Mindy were surprised to see how identical they looked. You're my twin sister. Mindy said, tearing up as she opened her arms to hug Andy. I'd always wanted a sister, Andy said. Thank you for bringing me home, she cried. Every day, Lisa and Patrick worked hand in hand to raise Andy and Mindy. They took turns cooking, cleaning, and taking them to school. Patrick also happily tutored his two granddaughters so they could grow up to value their education and one day follow their dreams. We hope you liked today's video. Don't forget to give us a like and leave us a comment below. See you tomorrow.